Hey guys, I'm Alex from Zaxworks. Let's talk about the importance of adding foreground effects to your titles. Now, what exactly are foreground effects? Well, these are things like dust, smoke, lens flares, things that can be added on top of your design to add more depth. Well, a clean look is good. I understand that. I like clean looks sometimes, but other times you're going to want more depth, more layers to give it a more interesting look. And we all know these layers take time to create. They do. They take a lot of time. And the more time you put in, you won't even realize you don't like what you're making until you put in too much time and it's just too late to go back. So what's the solution? Well, fortunately, things have changed. Okay, Our friends at Rampant have come up with a ton of foreground effects and they call them style effects. And they're really easy to use and they're incredibly cheap. So they have a new pack out called Edit Essentials, which I'll be pulling most of my example from. Now I adhere to the, I know what I like once I see it, school of design. You know, I like to try, I don't like to plan, I like to hit the undo button. I'm a pro at hitting the undo button. And I feel like these kind of style effects were made with me in mind. Now Rampant has a huge library, so I can go ahead and I can try, I can try, I can try, until I can find something I like. If I don't like something, I'll just hit the undo button, it's that easy. All right, so let me go ahead and show you what I'm talking about here. Here I have a 3D title created in a Zaxworks Pro Animator. The fragmentation is cool and interesting and the motion is fun to look at, but by itself it doesn't look as good as it could. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a rampant design background, so we don't have to look at all this black. Just by dragging it there that gives it a little color, with some floating particles to start making it more interesting. Good! However, it's still a little flat and needs more to really make it special. Now if we look here in my project manager, we can see I have folders called dust, film, flares, and overlays. These are the style effects. I'm going to start by adding some dust. Let's open up the dust folder and drag dust 59 into our scene. We'll make sure it's above the pro animator layer and change its blending mode to screen. Note that all of Rampant's footage is 4K, so it's going to be larger than my HD frame size. That's really good. That means we can move it around and gives us flexibility when we only want part of the image. However, for this case, I want to use the whole thing, so the image needs to be exactly the same size as my comp. So select the layer, and then we'll go up to Layer, Transform, and Fit to Comp. Now when we play it back, we can see we have some really cool particles swishing through our scene. Look at that. Let's try a different dust though. We'll drag Dust31 into our scene, delete our old one, and then change its blending to screen, just like before, and then Layer, Transform, Fit to Comp. Perfect. You can see this one has a lot more dust and it moves faster, which I think lends a sense of action to my title. I like it better that way, okay? Okay, so now let's add a flare to the project. Over here in the flares folder, let's take flare 7 and drag it into our scene. Then change its blending mode to screen. And lens flares are cool because they often add light in places you might not expect. For instance, Notice how this reddish lens flare makes my scene feel a little bit evil and mysterious. Ooh. If we delete that flare and add a new one, let's add this one, and then change the blending mode again, and fit to comp, you can see how different our scene feels, right? Look at that. All right, so now we run into a problem. You see how the flare moves from bottom to top? Well, what if we want it to move from top to bottom? Shoot a new flare? No, that's not going to happen. Just click S on the keyboard to reveal the scale property and put a negative sign in front of the Y value. This will flip the flare footage so the flare moves in the right direction. Next, notice how the flare moves down, but it doesn't quite go past our letters. This makes it a little difficult to read the text. So put my time marker on the last frame of the animation and we'll move the flare to be at the bottom of the text just by clicking and dragging. Of course, that leaves this gap up here where the frame stops. To fix it, easy. Just increase the Y scale just by dragging this top point so the gap isn't there. Easy. Good. Remember, Rampant has 4K footage, so you can do little tweaks to the footage and still have plenty of resolution to keep it looking good. Okay, so now we're getting somewhere. The layers are stacking up and starting to make the graphic more and more impressive. Next, let's look at some light overlays. Drag Overlay 1 into our scene. Once again, fit to comp. Change the blending mode to screen, and when we hit play, we see we get this cool reddish light sweep that adds another element of awesome to my title. Maybe maybe too much awesome, okay? So let's try a different one. We'll delete it again, go up to our project manager, and let's try this one right here. It's a little more subtle. Once again, we'll change it to screen, fit to comp, and it still looks great, but it's not overpowering like the red one. See the difference? Cool. 
Okay, so the last part of this animation is to make it look a little retro. Rampant has some style effects to mimic film problems. Let's try one to see what it does. We have to change the blending mode to multiply this time and then fit to comp like before. So this one bounds our image to a square-like old school look and adds some damage to the front. Look at that. Cool, but not exactly what we're going for in this title. It looks cool, but not for this one. Instead, let's go ahead and delete that one and when we have this other film one, it's more of a vignette. We'll place it above all the other layers. We'll fit to comp. And once again, we'll change the blend mode to multiply. Now we'll scale it down and see it's a nice vignette with some flicker. This is pretty close, but it's still a little bit too much for this project. To reduce the effect, all we need to do is press the T key and reduce the opacity to 50. Boom. Now, when we look at our title before, boom, turn off. And after we see what a drastic difference it is to add style effects to our scene. Crazy, right? All right, that's it. Look how easy it is to change the look of your entire scene so quickly. Hope you guys have fun adding your own foreground effects. I'm Alex from Zaxworks, and I'll see you soon.